Do you see my? Um... Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. It's gonna go all the way. I just continued in the same PowerPoint okay. I had last time. Nice. Um, so some of it is still a bit long because it's just how I process things that I just have to like type along with it. But uh, I'll do my best to just um, go through very quickly. Okay, so we do have quite a bit to cover and there are some exercises which I found a bit difficult to do. So I thought, and I dropped this in the Slack in case you missed it, um, I will try to go through um, the theory part very quickly. And then we could co-work on the exercises um, in the remainder of the time. Yeah? Sounds good. So, okay. And I also mentioned that I found like two sites with solutions to the exercises and I haven't peeked at them because, you know, I don't want like a spoiler alert. Um, but if we do get stuck, we can like refer to that and figure it out. Also, if you're running short on time. Okay. So just as a recap, uh, I'm actually going to go back. Um, we are working with data transformations. So functions with which we can sort of manipulate our data to look uh, to with which we can kind of operate with it differently. And there's five key functions. We have filter, which is to pick observations by value. So if you want, oh, I want to pick observations which are between one and five, or I want to pick all the observations uh, from January or January the first or January the second, we can use filter. Um, we did that last class, uh, last session class, like I'm a teacher now, um, back in university teaching first year students. Um, yeah, the next four are what we're going to be covering today. The first one will be arrange, which is to reorder rows. Uh, then we have select, which is to pick variables by their names. It's slightly different from filter. Um, mutate, which is to create new variables within, with functions of existing variables. So we're literally, you know, putting two variables together, three variables together, and just mutating it into one new variable using the what is already there. And summarize, which is to collapse many values to a single summary, so aggregating. And there is also the grouping function, which we will cover after summarize, which we can use it in addition or in conjunction with all the other ones. All right. Fast forward. Okay, so coming down to a range. So a range is very similar to the filter function. The filter function is when you want to select specific columns that you want. Um, and of course you have specific values in those columns that you're trying to narrow down to. Here it's the same thing, but instead of selecting rows, you're just changing the order so the rows in the table is according to the columns you supply. So if you want to try this out in our studio right now, um, don't forget to load the, um, the flight data and also tidyverse. Um, and then you can arrange the flights data set first by year, then by month, and then by day. Or the simplest one that you can do is arrange lights and you just run and then you can see how the data set will sort itself and it goes in order. Uh, one thing to note is that missing values are always at the end unless you specify otherwise. You can use descent which is basically to reorder the column in descending order. The default is always ascending order. So here you're trying to arrange the flights data set um, in descending order per the departure delay numbers. And if you go over here, you can see that the data set is going from the most delayed departure and it's going downwards. The rest will remain the same. If we didn't use the descent function, then it would have been in ascending order. So to repeat again, rows are going to be arranged with this function in the way that you specify. Okay. So I'm going to skip this very quickly and then we come back to the exercises and kind of do it all together. Um, do you, and does anyone have any questions about arrange the function without answers, without referring to the exercises just yet? Thumbs up if you're feeling good or if you have questions or something you want to discuss. Yeah, maybe something I want to discuss. Mm -hmm. So, from the arrange, from the 
might be bad to they said like something that I couldn't uh, understand. They said for like other flyer bags, arrange largely ignore grouping. So you need to explicitly mention grouping variables that is dot by group. Anybody knows what this means? Alan, I think you're muted. I don't know. Are you? Oh. Hello. So I, I, I yes. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, I, I think what you're trying to say is related to grouping, um, and uh, it's something that's going to come up later on, uh, towards the end. Like mm -hmm. after, after looking at all the variables, uh, then there is doing uh, applying the verbs by group. Okay. Yeah using group by so maybe we could, we could wait until and, until yeah. then. Right. fine fine, fine yeah fine. So, but um, I'm not sure if I understood the question correctly because the audio was a bit um, spotty but you can use these functions without grouping so you can use arrange without grouping or filter without grouping just directly on the data set and it will just go in the order that um, okay. can you hear me now yeah Ah, okay, so you say you couldn't arrange. I mean, when it comes to grouping, I would uh, bring the question. Let's go. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's definitely more stuff that can happen with the grouping function. It gets really crazy then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I think> so. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, so we've covered filter, we've covered arrange, and now we're with select. So the difference here, well, wait, sorry, wrong. So select allows you to, well, literally select specific columns or a subset of columns. So there's different ways that you can do this. If you want to select, for example, three specific columns, um, that's the first code that I have here for you. Um, this is your data set, which is flights. And I've just named, it's also the same in the book, it's not me. Um, and I've just named three columns that, that it little out for you. So you select these specific three columns. And so just insert the column names and um, it will literally extract those. You can also um, write this into a new data object. So if you have the assignment arrow, um, the left facing arrow, you can write it to a new object. Um, but for now, we only have this. You can also you know, write it in different ways. So you can select all the columns between year and day. So year is, for example, column number three and day is like column number uh, seven. So if you use this colon in between, it will select all of the columns between year and day and also inclusive of years. So including year, the next couple of columns and then day. And it stops right there. Um, similarly, but the other way around, you can select all the columns except those between year and day inclusive. So you do the same thing with the colon, but then you have in parentheses, you have like the negating signifier over there. Um, I think that you can also do this with column numbers, but I'm not sure and I haven't tried, so don't take my word for it. But for example, if you were to go number one to 23, I don't know, but I think that's also if the columns are not named. So Why don't not? take Let's my word it. for it. Let's we'll try it. You can try it uh, when we get to the exercises. Okay, cool. Okay, um, there are also some things, the, there is a subsection on helper functions that you can use with the select, uh, larger select functions. And again, I've written all of this out for you and it's basically just compressing it in one slide. But for example, you can select from the data set whether or not a variable starts with, for example, ABC. So starts with the beginning of the name of the variable, ends with, Again, X, Y, Z, and this can be in double quotes. Um, contains, so if anywhere in the variable name, if it contains these alphabets, it will select those columns. And there are also slightly more complicated ones. For example, matches. Um, this has something to do with functions um, that we write ourselves, like programming strings. So I didn't elaborate too much on it, so you can take a peek. Um, you can also select a uh, number range, um, say for example, one to three or from X. Uh, rename 
is a variant of select that can be used to edit variable names. You can also use select directly to edit variable names, but what happens is it drops all of the other variables if the name is not included. So rename is a better option to use. Um, there's also everything, and I didn't fully understand this. So if someone here actually figured this out, we can explain that in more detail. But um, yeah. for more information, you can use the help yeah. function. So I think for everything, like for example, we have uh, a data frame with uh, five columns, and um, we want to have, yeah, okay. Yeah, so for instance, we have, uh, uh, just go off, go off. Yeah, just go off, go off. Yes, okay, this one. So for instance, we have our data frame like this, and the data we have is flight, and uh, we can say the first uh, column is year, and we can put uh, dot and insert for us to say day, we can say everything, then all other, variable will be at the end. So it's used like if you have specific two columns you want to put at the beginning, then you can put their names and the other you can say everything. Mm. So every, the all ones will be uh, in there. And also yeah. there is one that I found useful that I used uh, this week, which is um, uh, last column. So I was like before, I need to, if I want to find the last column, because if I have a data frame that is maybe um, large number of columns if I want to find the last column. So I do like, I find the total size of the data frame and I do minus one and <laughs> I do the subtraction so that I can get the last column. But uh, I find it uh, very difficult to find the last column, which is also in the uh, uh, part of uh, uh, select, which only returns the last column of the data frame. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Also, because when you mutate uh, things, it just goes automatically to the end of the data set. So it's nice if you can work with the last column thing. Uh, also, also, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, oh yeah, now it makes sense. I was wondering why it was like this, just two variables here and then everything, but oh. this is specifying the order. So first yeah. I want time hour, then I want air time, then, then everything, everything else that is remaining yeah. as yeah. it is. Okay. Just wasn't sure. I was just like overthinking at that point. Okay, awesome, cool. All right, skipping exercises and already here we are at the mutate function. Yeah, there we go. Okay, um, so we've covered filter, arrange, select, and now we are really getting into more and more well manipulate uh, functions, you can say. Um, here we are really creating new variables from existing ones. So you're really computing variables together in a certain sense. Um, the new columns are always added to the end of the data set. That is just what we discussed. So you can try out this code, which is very simple. Uh, very simple. Uh, mutate, and this is the data set that you're going to work with. And these are the new variables that you're creating. So this will be colored sort of differently in your um, cons console. Um, the gain, so departure delay minus arrival delay. And you have speed, which is distance divided by time in the air, uh, multiplied by 60. Um, and then you can have, well, you don't see it in this data frame, but at the end of this slide, at the end of the data set, you have two new variables, for gain and for speed. So you can try this out right now, if you would like. Um, another thing to also keep in mind is that within the code that you're writing, you can also refer to the columns that you've just created. So it's not necessary that you have to run the function to create the new variables first, that I create a gain and I create hours and then I need it, and then I make a new function to compute something with gain in hours, but you can all do it in the same thing. So you have mutate, which you're doing on the flights. You're creating a new variable called gain. You're creating a new variable called hours. And then immediately you're also using gain and hours to create a new variable, so gain per hour. So it's not the fact that you have to do this part first and then start a new line of code where you include these two new variables in a function. 
So it's just nice to know. Okay, uh, what happens when you use the mutate function is that it just keeps the old variables and just adds the new variables to the end of the data set. But if you only want to keep the new variables and drop the old, you can use the transmute function. So same thing, but you will see that all the variables that we used in the computation would have been dropped. So departure delay, arrival delay, airtime, all of that will be dropped. And then you only have gain hours and gain per hour left in the tuple. Okay, so um, this would have taken multiple uh, slides. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, so, yeah, would mutate, um, yeah, can you go back, go back a bit? Okay, you made mention of two things that uh, maybe I need to uh, just put my two cents. So the first one is that with mutate, um, by default, the new variable that is created is put at the uh, last column, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So now with the this line, you can use another thing to uh, put whether at any position. We have the before. You can specify if you say one, it's put at the beginning of the data frame. Or you can use the after and specify the uh, variable with which it's put and after. So if you check the and um, take from this layer, they bring this uh, which is experimental, bring mm -hmm. that. And also they also uh, is the which you use transmute, which keeps uh, drop the one. So now with new tech, with new tech, you can use what is called the keep. If the keep is used, then it will keep only the variables that are used within. If it is unused, it will drop. So these are two new things which uh, actually help you, the keep and also after, and you can check them in the assembly. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. So just to repeat, um, you can override the, um, the, the fact that new columns are put at the end of the data set with either the before or, or after. after. Yeah. Um, and the other last thing that you mentioned, is I heard something about keep. Yeah. But the audio wasn't very clear for me. Yeah, so that one you said like what you said in transmute. With transmute yeah, with transmute. Function, with transmute function, uh, what it does is only leaves the uh, variable that I uh, use, right? Yeah. So now you can use the keep. So, yeah. Cool. Mm. Nice. And is there a reason I would use this instead of transmute? This one, I think, it, uh, I mean, if you are using mutate, it's mutate through your document and uh, you can just override the feature whether to use the keep or not. I mean, the keep uh, used um, actually, um, yeah, I don't know if there is any uh, thing that uh, actually is preferable uh, to transmute or to mute with this feature. Yeah, so based on the documentation, it seems that what it's allowing you to do is, for example, if you use used as the dot keep argument then it will keep the variables you use to build up your new yeah. uh, variables so here for example if you said dot keep equals used then your final data frame would have gain it would have hours gain per hour but it will also have departure delay arrival delay airtime mm -hmm. as well so it would keep the columns that you've used to build your variables but yeah. get rid of everything that you haven't used and then mm -hmm. if you do unuse it does the other way around so it's also, if you use it, just if you see none, if you say none, it will not keep anyone. It just brings the new variable created. Nothing will return from the data frame. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for adding that. All right. So um, I'm going to continue. So with respect to um, the mutate function, there are different creations uh, functions or operators that you can use. And uh, this takes quite a bit of space like on one slide and I wanted to keep it in one slide. Um, so just to summarize, there's different creation functions. The most obvious ones are like arithmetic operators and logical comparisons. Um, if I pull up this slide here, um, arithmetic operators are just your, well, quite literally to do your basic math. Uh, plus, minus, multiplication, and so on. Um, kind of going back down, 
the logical comparisons, we've covered that in the filter function. So again, greater than, less than, equal to, plus and greater than, not equal to. These are the ones that you can use um, quite straightforward. But there's also other ones. So you can have modular arithmetic, which I have never used and I hope never to use. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there is the option for modular arithmetic. Uh, you can use logarithms. Again, you uh -huh. can use that in um, within the did, function for mutating. Is it the same? You, you mean are they the same? No, no, no. Ah, this okay. is the next one. So it's okay. modular arithmetic, then you have logs. Okay. Um, I've not used any of these things myself and I don't know if I will, so I didn't read too much into it. But just for you all to know, and just so you know it's there in the book, um, there's offsets. So to lead, to refer to leading or lagging values. So if you want to see how values change, um, then you can say, you can also use the group by function and see how it works. So here is an example. So you can see what are the leading values. Oh, sorry, here it is, the leading values and the lag values. I'm still not sure how it works. What do you mean? But you know it's there. So <laughs> it's just the other way around. So I see like one is highlighted, but there's NA over here and then there's NA at the end. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just, um, you can think about it as just moving the the, the, the numbers or the time series, uh, mm -hmm. one step to the left or one step to the right. Right. So, okay. Or up and down, whichever direction you want to look at it from. Yeah, right. so, yeah, so it's kind of interesting that I didn't know this. I was trying to do something last week. I was just Googling and uh, I just see a code that does what I need. I just copy it. So when I was reading the chapter, I see this that, oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it does, but only when I am reading, I just copy the code and. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if I just run it myself, it'll start to make sense. Okay, cool. Um, there's cumulative and rolling aggreg um, aggregates. So if you want to run sums, products, uh, minimums and maximum, so you have all of these. Um, there's also a cumulative mean option. And then there's also a package if you need rolling aggregates, and we're not going to go into that right now. So if you have the cumulative um, sum of X, um, it keeps adding just cumulatively. And if you want the cumulative mean, again, it just keeps going. So that's an option that is available. Um, there's ranking functions, and this comes up in the exercise, and which is probably why I got stuck in it because I didn't pay too much attention. Um, there's a number of ranking functions. There's minimum ranking, first, second, third, fourth. Uh, the default gives the smallest values and the smallest ranks and use descending order to give the largest values the smallest ranks. So you have minimum rank, minimum rank, and then descending order to turn it, turn it around. If minimum rank doesn't do, doesn't do its thing, you also have the options of row number, dense rank, and again, they tell us to look at the page for more details. Um, but yeah, with that, easy. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain the minimum rank again? Okay. So the minimum rank is basically, well, there's this, this is a ranking function. So you give the smallest values the smallest ranks. So for example, one will get uh, the rank of one. And here you see, for example, two and two will just get the rank of two, uh, the second uh, second. Um, you have NA, which is just getting a, uh, NA rank because NA is basically like contagious, so it's always just there. Um, the third one is getting the fourth rank. The number four is getting the fifth rank. And you can also flip it around. So in the sense that um, the largest values get the smallest ranks. So uh, number four is the largest value here, so it gets the smallest rank. Uh, number one is the smallest value here, so it gets the highest rank if you use the descent function, descending mm -hmm. function here. Do you, do you think of any possible application? I'm not sure, like I was thinking where to use the, you know what I mean, like. Wherever you want to find the first or the last something, let's say you have a group of flights that all depart from one place and go to another place. In, and you want to know, I don't know, the 
the fastest flight of every month, then you'd group it by these hmm. things are the same and then take the ah, first thing. Interesting. Okay, okay. so ah. it, will give you, it will give you the ranks of their fastness, right? Yeah, based on what you rank it by. In this yeah. case, whatever Y represents, for example. Ah. Yeah. It's also, I think, because um, if you have three flights, for example, with the same speed or say that the, the same, um, uh, yeah, then it gets the same rank. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah. Yep. Thank so you very much for this explanation. So I just really, I don't, I don't understand why we can, it really makes sense now. Yeah, it can seem a bit abstract, like without an example. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, we're almost keeping good time. Um, but well, not for the exercises, we come back to that. Um, but we are finished with discussing mutate, and we're coming now slowly into the group summaries. And I think hopefully we can cover this fast. We can really go through the exercises. Wait, I'm just trying to hide the chat. Okay, so summarize again, you know, with these, with these verbs, it's quite literal. Um, it collapses the data frame into a single row. So you have a column, you have multiple values, uh, you collapse it all into one single row. Um, in this case, what we have is we want to summarize from the flights data set um, the mean departure delay and the label it as a new sort of variable. Um, so the mean departure delay um, is apparently 12.6. Well, this is a markdown thing, so you can't see it happen. Um, we have used na.rm equals true for a specific reason. And we come back to that later um, when we talk about missing values. Okay, so the summarize function, so this is very straightforward as I just showed you, but it becomes more useful. Yeah, and um, please can you go back? Yes. So this flight is the data as a uh, 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 departure delay, it summarizes the whole departure delay for the whole flights, right? Mm -hmm. And gives us a single number? Yeah, a single number. So, uh, okay, so, okay, okay. So it, it doesn't say that um, this is the mean for a particular flight or the, the mean for the whole flight, right? No, not yet. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. So here it is just for the entire um, data set and that particular column for departure delay, what's the mean? Okay. Okay, so here's where we start to make it a bit more, uh, just making sure, yeah, a bit more detailed. Uh, sorry, um, sorry, excuse me, excuse me, go back again. I want to make it, go back to the previous slide. Okay, now with this, since the departure delay is a single column, so can I, if I create the mean of that column, is the summary, the summary here, summarize, for instance, the departure delay, I calculate the mean of that column, departure delay. Is it this, will give me the same answer, this summary, summarize? Yes, it will be. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, here is an example where we're going to summarize specifically by a certain day. So what we're going to do here is, and I can run this and I can't run it myself right now. Um, we are grouping flights by the year, the month and the day. And first by year, then by month, then by day. Uh, and we put it into a new uh, date frame or a table. And now we're summarizing it specifically on the departure delay. And what do we see in the results? Um, okay, did I do something here? Because I see my output is different. But do you all have similar output if you run it right now? Yeah, it, 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 it should be the same. Uh, the, the, the one there is not an error or anything, it's just a message. Yeah, I'm just making sure because it's not, uh, I don't see the remainder of it. Yeah, so now you can see basically um, per day, the mean delay. So you have 1st of January, 2013, 2nd of January, 2013, 3rd of January, 2013. So you can see by day, you can see what the departure delay is. So I had a question myself over here. 
like when I see it, it makes sense. But how did it, because for example, how did it sort of just make it by day? Um, because you have year, you have month, you have day, but ultimately it only aggregated for the specific day. I don't even know if I'm phrasing my question correctly. For each row, you basically have a unique combination of year, month, and day. So it's basically yeah. in your data frame, mm -hmm. everything that matched the year of 2013, mm -hmm. then matched the month of one, then right. matched the day of one, was then yeah. was first mm -hmm. put into, imagine like a mini data frame of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Then the summarize operation is basically is performed on that subset yeah. and the result then ends up in the single row. So if you had, let's say, I don't know, 100 flights mm -hmm. on the 1st of January, all of that is collapsed into the single row. Okay. And then next. Okay, that is beautifully explained. Thank you so much. <laughs> you, you really beautifully explained it because this can really cut on my brain sometimes. I mean, yeah, it, it was very abstract. So I knew how it happens because I saw it compute in front of my head and I'm like, yeah, that's how it is. But I somehow couldn't like, how yeah, did it I sort of happen? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I, I mean, if I were to flip it, so if I say day, year, mm -hmm. month or something, would Doesn't it somehow matter. change? No, 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 right? It will not make sense. Okay. <laughs> No, 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 that would be great. I've never tried that really. It would be a bit, a bit, a bit uh, an interesting no. result. I don't know. Sometimes no, we think know. this because it, it goes in a certain order or a sequence. Like I'm not messing with it. I don't want to, but. Uh, no, you, you, you'll definitely get a result. Uh, but um, I highly yeah. doubt that it will be changing the data set. No, you basically get the same result because yeah. at the end of the day, what yeah. you're saying is yeah, the unique result. combinations of this. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Well, thank you. All right. Well, um, we are moving ahead into something else, which is going to help with combining all of these different functions together. And it looks ugly in this slide for some reason. I, this one did not render properly, um, but it's called piping. It's like magic. No, it's not magic, but um, it definitely makes your code much more simple and readable and easier to follow. Um, so this looks terribly ugly, so I'm going to see uh, if I can bring it up in the book. Okay, so you have an example here where they're doing a lot of different things. So the first thing they want to do is, you know, they're grouping the flights by destination. Oh wait, let's see. They want to explore the relationship between the distance and average delay for each location. So how are you going to do this? First thing you want to do is, you know, group by destination because we we're trying to look at you know, the relationship for each destination. Um, and then you want to summarize based on per destination, uh, what is the mean distance and what is the mean arrival delay? And also you have to like count for it. Um, and you also have to do a quick filter because you don't want like this um, Honolulu because apparently it's out of the way. And you're also trying to remove any outliers there. So group your flights by destination, summarize the computer distance, average delay number of flights, remove noisy points and Honolulu airport. So the thing is what's happening is we are giving each intermediate data frame a name. So first you have by destination, then you have by delay, and then again, on that delay data frame, you're trying to do this filtering. So there's a lot of stuff going on here and it's unnecessary. What you can do is just use pipes and then just have a single data frame. Flights, this is the data set that we're going to start with. Then you're going to group by destination. Then you summarize on these three levels. And finally, you do a filter option. So it focuses on the transformations and not what is being transformed. So here you're really going on step by step, what exactly is the transformation occurring and that you are trying to make happen as opposed to applying that transformation on a specific object. So instead of like, oh, I have created an object here, do a transformation on that. And then on that object, I'm trying to do a different transformation. So instead of doing that, you're just going through each step sort of naturally. 
and uh, that's really nice and will make your code look much more straightforward and much more neater. And you won't have an environment sort of littered with a lot of tiny, tiny data frames. Okay. All righty. Um, I've, I've heard about this, this analogy trying to explain pipes. Uh, for example, you could think about it as, uh, as a recipe. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A food recipe. You, you you put oil, then you, you put stuff, and you keep on adding stuff, adding stuff. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Go for and it. The, the pipe it comes from magnetary or something. I don't understand. To cut the chart, and from this attic or something. I don't know. So what this is. I have no clue what this is. I am Googling it. Yeah, here. From the table. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I guess. Oh, is it not from Tidyverse? I don't know. It is in the Tidyverse. It is in the Tidyverse, but. Yeah, Tidyverse is a collection of multiple packages. Yeah. And this is one of them. Yeah, it uh -huh, is in the okay. tidyverse. I've seen so the, um, the hex sticker. This one. Yeah. So this, this, how do you pronounce it? Machriter, because it has a French accent apparently to it. That's what it says. <laughs> More in English, so I don't know how to say it. So, okay, cool. It should be pronounced so, with a sophisticated French accent. <laughs> so this packet contains only this type. Yeah, I think they basically built this to enable this piping function to occur because it did not exist with base R, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Cool stuff. All right. Uh, where did I go? Okay. Uh, missing values. Uh, so that was what I said earlier that we'll come back to this. Um, I'd mentioned that, you know, the NAs, if you involve them in any operation, it results the result will just be NA directly, but there are arguments that you can apply to override that. One is the NA.RM equals true argument, where the missing values are removed prior to computation. So it basically skips all the missing values and just removes it. Um, you can also manually do this. So you can, for example, in your code itself, just say, create an exception and remove anything which is marked as not applicable or NA within the column, say, arrival delay. You can do this yourself, but this is probably the most simplistic one that you can do. So, um, the, these functions, um, the flyer functions, that uh, NARM, is it default or we need to, by default, is it true by default or no? No. If it was true, then we wouldn't have to worry about it um, because the NA result would come. So by applying this NA equals true, um, you're removing the NAs. Uh, okay. So it's good to check um, before, so it's good to inspect the data before you actually run these operations. So you know like, oh, which columns have NAs and which columns don't. Um, because at some point you might have to specify that, oh, you have to skip these. Um, so, yeah, so um, you can do it in two ways. In that case, you can uh, remove the uh, NA before and then you can specify the argument margin. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so this is just within uh, a function, like you, could, you can just do it then and there. But for example, if you're doing like a whole step of data cleaning where you're just removing all the NAs and this is like one way you can do it. So that is like a pre-processing, but here is just like within the function, you can just specify this argument. All right, okay. Uh, whenever you do any aggregation, this is just a very quick point. It's a good idea to include either accounts or a count of missing values or non-missing values. So this is how you do a regular count. Um, also, you can try and get a count of um, what is not missing. Uh, summary functions, again, useful ones. Uh, we'll move to the book because the slide is... Uh, 
we think by multiple loops. Are we here yet? No, 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 no. Um, there's different summary functions. So just like what we saw earlier, um, there's different ways that you can improve on this or already preloaded in R. So for example, measures of location, um, you already have means, counts, and sum. That's what we looked at. But you can, for example, have median, uh, median or mean. Um, you can also just do measures of spread. So standard deviation, um, interquartile, what is it, interquartile range? Yeah, interquartile range and median absolute deviation. Uh, yeah, these are other sort of summary functions. Um, ranking, the minimum, the quantile, the maximum. You can also specify, you know, which percentage of value. So what's a threshold, for example. So here it is the quantile, the variable in question, and greater than 25% of the values or less than 75%. Uh, measures of position. So first, last, uh, the nth value. Uh, did I have anything? Yeah. Uh, you've seen n, which takes no arguments, returns the size of the current group. If you do the non-missing values, it is, again, negation of Na. To count distinct unique values, you use n underscore distinct. How do you count missing values? Because here they only say non-missing values. Has everyone tried that? Yeah, missing value is S it's NA, right? Yeah, no, just negation. remove the exclamation mark. Negation. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, so some summary is NA and then in the specific variable. Yeah. Nice. Uh, counts, counts. Have I covered the most important ones? Uh, the counts, counts and proportions of logical values. Yeah, so here's another one. Okay, this is also getting to a level where I haven't, don't do these types of computations yet. Um, but you can do counts and proportions of logical values. Um, you have functions where you can have arguments, true is one, false is zero, so that makes it very useful. So you have the summary of a variable x, and then you give the number of trues, it gives you the, the um, gives you one, 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 um, and mean will give you the proportion. Okay, so. Moving on, if there are no questions, it's taking so long. You're paying by multiple variables. I think this is the last one though. Uh, no, there's group mutates and filters too. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, so when you group by multiple variables, so we have covered basically all the main functions, uh, the, the deployer verbs basically. So now we're really thinking about, you have to, you can group it. And we talked about how you can group by one variable and apply these functions, but now you can group even by multiple variables and still apply those functions. And check out what happens here. This is very nice. It goes very progressively. Uh, when you group by multiple variables, each summary peels off a level of the grouping. So you sort of roll up a data set. So for example, um, what is happening on a daily level? You group the flight data by year, by month, and by day. And then what you do is, if you want to know what's happening per day, you summarize the daily data sets. Uh, if you want to know what's happening per month, you summarize it per day. And then if you go furthermore, if you want to summarize it per year, you take the, per, the data frame that you just made per month, and then you summarize it. And let's see if there is, um, yeah, there's, there's examples. So if I rendered that, the whole thing would be just the first table. So you have group by your month, day, and flights. Um, then when you go to the next level, you only have year and month. And then finally, you have for year, year you have so many flights. Uh, does this make sense or should I go over it again? Because I just rushed through it but does it make sense? But basically what you're doing is you're summarizing and then use, you're using that summarized data frame to summarize even further. So you're rolling up the data set. Yeah, makes sense for me. Me too. Uh, where are we? 
Awesome. Great. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, if you're ungrouping something, you can use the ungroup function. So you take your daily sort of data set, you ungroup it, and then you can summarize it again just by flights. All right, one last slide. I have, um, I have a question. Please. Oh yeah, of course. So in the, in the previous slide, you talked about ungroup. Ungroup. Yeah. Why do we ungroup? What will happen if we do not ungroup our data? I don't know. Um, okay, I'll go for it. Okay, so the, the different cases, but uh, the, the, the one I can easily talk about, the other one I always just find out uh, when I'm doing the data. Um, you always ungroup so that you don't forget to, 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 to remove that condition of grouping, applying a, a function or a verb by group. Mm -hmm. Because then you, you get different results later on when you've forgotten. And that's why uh, right now in the current uh, deployer version, uh, there is... A, a message that comes up and they say that uh, ungroup, ungrouping has been, or groups have been overridden or something like that. So it's just to keep track of your functions. So what you say is um, ungroup now in the current deploy is automatic, it ungroup your data automatic after? Yeah, yeah. So right now, right, right now it, it does that, but it's also important, however, it's important sometimes when you want to, I don't know, I'll try to explain this very well. Uh, if you have like four groups and you, you apply the groups and summarize, then your data set is going to have um, a result of four rows, right? Of the four groups. Mm -hmm. But if you ungroup it, then it's going to sort of like, it can easily expand it again. So you're going to have the original data set with a new column with your, uh, for example, in this case, your summary variable, which is flights. So it can be used in different cases, but um, uh, the last one I always have to, it's hard to explain. I, I have to show it to you, but what yeah. we can do it out here. Yeah, maybe we can, you can show yeah. for us. I mean, this thing, I'm not sure how I understand it, but if I can see the practical, what you're saying, I understand it better. Yeah, we, we, we could run that, uh, that exact uh, code. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Um, very last slide uh, with theory. So one last thing that you can also do with grouping is that, well, of course, it's most useful with a summarize function, but you can also use the other functions like mutate and filter. Um, the book says to avoid it except for quick and dirty manipulations. Why? Because it's difficult to follow through on each function that you've applied and make sure you've done it correctly. Um, but here's an example. So the first thing you have flights and then you've grouped it by your month and day. Um, filter, okay, to find the worst members of each group. What was this again? Have I forgotten? Um, so what's happening here is you have, you're trying to rank the ones who have an arrival delay and it is basically less than 10. But what is the 10 again? I forgot what the 10 is. And then, it's rank, I think, here. Yeah, so. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. So you're trying, <laughs> okay. now I remember. Yeah, so you, you have an arrival delay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you have an arrival delay and then you're trying to uh, arrange it, of course, um, according to um, descending order, and then you're ranking it and then you want the worst, basically 10 of yeah. them. Yeah, you want to do the best, yeah. Yes, well, um, this is all very complicated. It would be nicer if you had pipes, which kind of actually went through each step sort of separately, which is also why he says avoid it, I think. Because I don't know which happened when. And uh, well, yeah, there's also some other examples, which I did include in the slide because it would take the whole space. Uh, find groups bigger than a particular threshold. So you've grouped uh, popular destinations. 
group by destination, and then you want to see um, yeah, which destinations um, have more than 365. So people who go to these destinations more than 365 times. Be sure what it is. It's what if I got that wrong, please correct me. Uh -huh. Sorry, what did you say? No, I think that, that's right. Yeah. Yep. So I guess basically, on average, more than one flight a day yep. is a possible destination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. they want to do that. Yeah. They say to avoid it. So let's not like process it way too much <laughs> unless we end up with errors and then we know why that's the case. Okay. Well, um, that's about it for the summary part of it. So would you like to go through the exercises? Um, oh my God, there's actually only five minutes left. <laughs> How did this happen? But I felt like just when I started two slides ago, it was still eight o'clock. Okay. But maybe we can discuss if there were particular exercises that you tried to do and you found difficult. Because uh, Ruth mentioned in the chat that something was a bit of a challenge for her. Where is it? Or are there any questions or are there any particular ones that you want to take a sh crack at? We could try to look at uh, Rufi's um, question. Yeah. So she had 5.5.2, uh, question number two. 5.5.2, question number two. Let me move this. Question two, question two. Okay, compare um, air time. So that's the amount of time that you're in the air, the flight is in the air with arrival time minus departure time. What do you expect to see and what do you see and what do you need to do to fix it? Okay. Um, The difference basically between arrival time, dep uh, departure time, and the amount of time in the air is quite literally um, air time. That variable is that you're basically, the flight is in the air, but arrival time, departure time also includes the time that it's landed and it's like taxiing or sort of preparing to depart. So I noticed that it, the numbers don't completely align. Um, but how do we compare it or how do we fix it? So I get it theoretically. And what is there to fix? Gotta look at it, that's a very subjective question. She also had a question about Five point six point seven. Question number one. Ooh, yeah, this is another one. This we could something we can also try. No. Okay, I'm also trying it out in our studio. Yeah, my data is taking long to load. Oh. Select. Uh. Hide video, no, wrong thing. Show video panel. Okay. So air underscore table. How do you compare the two? Uh, first look at them, maybe. It's a big data set. Let's see. Arrival time minus 
have you have you run it? One sec. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, we can't see your R studio, by the way. No, I'm still doing it on my own, like figuring something out. Um, I think one of the things that we should do is, uh, like in the previous question, mm -hmm. uh, you had to sort of convert it from to a more convenient continuous representation. Because currently, for example, when it says, you know, arrival time one three five that's like one hours and 35 minutes so maybe maybe that's the starting point i don't know should i sneak peek at the solution <laughs> No, do do we need to? If we find, we can't find the answer, of course. All right. Yeah. So I think the first the first thing we like like uh, how about you saying the first thing we need to do is change the departure time and arrival time to minutes or hours. Yeah. So I think minutes might be better because. Yeah. Um, the air underscore time variable is in minutes, or we convert the other one into hours, which or whichever is easy. Yeah. So I think when, when when we do that, we should be able to 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 match them together. Okay. Um, should I share my R Studio? Okay. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, but I'm still working out of the console. Uh, wait. Escape. New share. Oh, for two. Okay, can you see my R studio? Yep. Okay, so this is still um, just gonna open up an R chunk. No, wrong. What did I do? Okay. Um, can I cut this? 5.6, right? 5.6. No, it was 5.5. Let me go up. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay. What shall we do? So we need to convert um, one of it into hours. Uh, to in, in, yeah, or into into minutes maybe. Okay. Uh, how would we go about doing that? Let's see. So I'm going to take the flight and I'm going to mutate it. And I'm going to mutate what? I'm going to mutate the flights. Should I be writing this? No, this was a bit. Um, time. I can I can do that for you. What? Uh, the, the whole thing. Wait, what's happening? I made a mistake. Why is this happening? It's a pipe. So flights, pipe, mutate. No. Okay, let's see. That bracket, there is um, one less bracket. Yeah. Nice. Okay, and I have to divide it by sixty, right? Uh, is looking the wrong way. No. No, isn't it? Is it? No, it's not. Let me let me send it to you here in the chat. You. you okay. Know. Yeah. 
Uh, what have I done? Give me a second. Chat. Yeah. Oh. Hey, welcome back. Okay. Oh, no, you, you've made it very complicated. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so it's basically this, what I'm doing, I'm picking the time, the time element, the hours element, and mm -hmm. I'm applying it by 60 to turn it to minutes. Then I'm adding the, the, the minute element of the time. Uh, so you used these funny integer things, which I yeah. have not used. If I were not to use it, how would it look? Um, I have no idea. Probably you need to use strings. This one is the easiest because the other option is to use strings. Okay, okay. Uh, but it's also in the book. Um, if, if you go to, um, let me see, 5.5.1. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. This is the part that I kind of willfully ignored because it didn't make too much sense to me at the time. Yes, it's, okay. it's not straightforward. So sometimes, like for for, for me, I, I know it because I work with flight data. Oh. Yeah. So so I've I've, I've sat down and written it on the paper. So. Oh. So this data set must be so like for you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's your thing, right? Like yeah. one. Oh yeah. Miss, yeah. Okay, but wh where did I do it? Where did it go? I think it was it? Ah, here it is. Okay. No, this is the one. No, no, this no. is not the one. 5.2 point. No, wait. Oh. This is taking too long. What what have I done? You yeah, 5.5.2. 5.5.2. Can... 5. Yes, 5.5. 5. Yeah, there you are. There we go. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, guys. Why? Uh, Alan, maybe you want to share your R Studio because clearly you're far ahead. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So I, I see what you just. You, you, okay. Let, let's solve yours. You need to put that in mutate. So put. put uh, sorry. You, you, you need you need to mutate. So uh, then then the pipe also is facing the wrong direction. What have I done? What am I doing? Okay. Um, you know you have arrival time equals. Remove the mutate there. Mutate needs to go on the very outside so that you have flights pipe. Then you have mutate, and inside the mutate, you're defining your new variable. Yo, nice. And your pipe should go, should look to the right, not left. Um, let me give Neha at the end. Do you know the shortcut to put this funny thing like if we press Control for Shift and M, Control Shift M, it will insert this funny thing with <laughs> the pipe operator. Control oh. shift M. Command, command shift M. Command oh, shift. Oh my goodness, what happened? <laughs> okay. Command okay. shift M. Yeah. But that's good to know. Thank you. Yes. We uh, changed everything. We'll try again when outside of this document. It worked. So where, we, where are we? Okay, so we have arrival time. Is this what we're looking at? Mm. Uh, but no, that's the wrong, is that, is that the one? Yeah. Well, it didn't go to the end of the data set. For yeah, some yeah. So it, here you'll be just replacing it in this case. Okay. Yeah, so when, 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 you, when, you, when you're manipulating an existing variable, it, it's in place. Ah, so you mutate an existing variable, so it stays there. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Okay, uh, guys, now what? Uh, also, are you still recording me? Because this is so embarrassing. <laughs> it's too late for me. I can't do this. No worry. But, uh, like, so we do the same for the departure time. All right. Uh, should I just keep mutating it? I mean, continue yeah. with the pipe? 
no, no. So uh, you see, uh, before the last bracket, mm -hmm. yeah, you put a put a comma, and you can, you can enter. Then that's where you write. Same thing. Yeah, got it. Got it. So, Alan, why can't we move continue in the same line? Oh, oh, you can continue the same line. It's just that. It just um, looks ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there any package that uh, rearrange someone's code, even if you write it in an uh, ugly format? It rearranges to give you the best format. Is there anyone? Sorry? I was saying, like, is there any package that rearrange code to a better outlook? I, don't, I, I think so, but I've never used it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Did I make a mistake somewhere? Let's see. Unexpected bracket. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, please uh, write, you look at the second on uh, line 610. Um, mm -hmm. after, the, after your equal sign, there is a missing bracket. Hope that runs. Is it a double bracket? No, no I don't need a double anymore. There we go. Okay, so we have mutated the arrival time and the departure time. Yeah. In two minutes, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to annotate. I guess we're doing fine. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, what's next? So now we have to uh, have, should we compute a new variable with arrival time minus departure time? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me see. I'm going to, if I'm not going in the right track, let me know. Mm -hmm. You can probably add it to the previous mutate. You don't need to do that again. Hang on. Makes sense. And do I use the piping symbol again or do I just yeah. continue? Now I use the piping symbol yeah. again because you we close the bracket, right? Just like you did yeah. the second line. If you do another comma um, before the, that bracket that you're on. Okay. So the variable. So if you do enter, like okay. another thing to define is like, I guess calculated airtime. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, wait, sorry, I, I completely lost track because I was paying attention. I'm trying to compute a new variable. Um, what shall we call it? Uh, departure arrival. I don't know. I'm horrible at naming variables. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And that will be the new arrival time. Okay. Is there a mistake? This one does not seem to be happy. So yeah, you could remove. Yeah, okay, that should work. There we go. Looks fine. Everything looks fine. Yay. Yeah. Okay. But now you need to select, just select only those three variables. Good point. So start from the same line, add a pipe. So when do you add a pipe and when do you add, ah, so when you're, now I'm adding a pipe because I'm changing functions. I'm switching from mutates to select. Yes. Yes, all this theoretical wisdom. Yes, excellent. Okay. So I'm going to select, uh, which are the three variables I want? I want airtime. Yeah. And I want the new variable that I have made. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do we need anything else? Uh, I think those ones are enough. They'll, they'll do the job. Okay. Ooh la la. It's still different. Yeah. Should it be different? This is what I got to, and I don't quite understand because. I also calculated a difference between them just to see like 
if there was any pattern, but some yeah. of them are negative, some of them are positive. I don't understand. But, but I mean, uh, that, that is, uh, my thought is uh, that is expected. That's why initially I said this is more mm -hmm. subjective question because the, the, the time changes, the, the, the turnaround time changes from, from, from flight to flight. The taxing time changes from flight yeah. to flight. So it can be, it, it can only be the same. Yeah. Yeah, so but I, I thought if that, like, I thought if that's the case, then at least they'd all have the same sign. It's just maybe some take longer than others. But I guess if there's like some expected taxi time that doesn't capture it, that would explain why some of them are positive and some are negative. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So the taxi time is, it's, it's not fixed, it's not a standard thing. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really just the difference in what the variables represent. So, yeah, air time is just the minutes that the flight is in the air, and then arrival departure time takes into account also the taxiing mm -hmm. um, before landing or after landing. Um, and it can be different, so... Yeah, that's weird. Um... So this is what I mean. If air time is literally the time in the air, mm -hmm. it's calculated time we have, yeah. should only ever be greater because yeah. a plane can't have arrived before it stops being in the air. Yeah. No, not, not necessarily. Because, so, uh, and I have to check this data in a way. So normally there is a difference between the scheduled time and the actual time. Right. So... Oh. Delays. We've not looked at the delays. Departure delay and arrival delay. Maybe that's the difference. Yeah. Mm. Oh, then, then you could add that. Because the, the air time might be... I'm trying to check the, the, the help thing here. Whether, whether it is the scheduled time. Scheduled time can always be wrong. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Time spent. Air, air time is time spent. That's weird. Yeah, but 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 based on based based on the the documentation of the data, uh, airtime is also actually actual time spent. So we need to take into consideration the the, the delays. Mm -hmm. Like 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 how are you saying? Definitely. All right. Good job, Niha. Sorry? Good oh. job. Sorry, I just went to uh, turn on the lights in my room. <laughs> no, I, I, I was saying, so I, I was telling um, um, Hava that what she said is, is very reasonable. I think we should, we should be considering the uh, delays because based on the documentation of the data set, uh, arrival um, air time is actually the, the is the actual data actual time spent in the air, mm -hmm. non scheduled time. Yeah. Uh, so that that means that uh, we would have expected them to be the same. Um, however, what we non considering right now in this data that you have is the delays. Right. I think I have to do this step by step from start because now this is going over my head a little bit. Um, Maybe but basically should... the thing is we also have to take into account the delays for the arrival departure time um, and why that's different. Uh, how would you do that? Well, we have them as columns, so in our mutate we add or subtract them as... Uh... Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, do we want to... Uh, follow through with this because uh, I think I have to go but um, maybe Alan if you want you can share your screen and uh, you could continue. Why uh, don't we do the exercises uh, next week because you know it's better to be thorough and go through everything. And yeah uh, maybe what we can do is we do all of the ex we try to do all of the exercises on our own time it, or is that too much to ask for?
Yeah, yeah, I guess this is correct. Maybe we can do the exercise on our own. If you have any questions, one of the exercise is difficult, then we can uh, do it uh, live together, right? So that we can have good time to answer to the teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. So, yeah, so we could maybe do the exercises on our own and um, also drop any questions on the Slack. So if we can also like figure it out beforehand, mm -hmm. that can work. And mm -hmm. if there's something that we didn't manage to figure out uh, in Slack, then we can do it live. Um, or if there's something that all of us don't understand, we can try and do it um, live as well. Yeah. So, um, okay. yeah. Do we want to still like review the exercises, like almost the whole session next week, or say we reserve 15 minutes or 30 minutes to go over these exercises and then we start on the next chapter? Oh, but the next is a workflow chapter, so maybe we can have time. Um, 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 we add something um, that uh, for zip select, which bar that select column that uh, you said we will try to see whether we can provide the column numbers, the first column and second one to see whether. Did you, <laughs> you try it? No, no. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's. I'll try it on the console very quickly. Uh, wait, let me move this. Okay, how, how do we select columns? I forgot already. Um, no, just um, and I think, for example, you could select year to um, day. So this is just an example, and I'm just doing it. Okay. I figured that out, that works. Okay, let's select again flights. Uh, maybe one, two, yeah. Does it, it, work? Can't do, it won't work. It, it worked. No way. <laughs> Did it what? work? Okay, wait, I'm gonna, I selected column numbers two to six, so. Uh -huh. Oh. It works a lot. <laughs> But so for me, I oh, yeah, two to six, two, three, I, four. I tried five, with a negative. Huh. It worked. I mean, it will start from the other end. I think. Okay, so this is interesting to see. No, no, no. Uh, if you use a negative, it I think it drops those variables. Yeah, it drops. You're right. You're right, Neha. Because it, it negates. Yeah, it but drops. It, it, it did not work for me. Neha, it dropped. I think. You can you can try it. I don't know. It's okay. an error. Put them inside brackets. Two, yeah. Put them inside the bracket and put the negative. No. Oh yeah, okay. Two, six. Uh, yeah. I was gonna select that but drop one in between, but I think yeah. I just complicated yeah. my ideas. Yeah. Add another bracket, yes. What cool. happened? Yeah. Year? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so two to what six was dropped. So two, two, three, four, five, six, and then immediately to arrival time, it worked. <laughs> what did I do? So yeah, so oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I see, I see what I did. So I bring this sheet to so interesting to talk on something. So now we can subset the columns with their number. So how can you subset the rows with their number? Oh. But uh, I think the select function doesn't work with rows. It only so, works with columns. So, so the tidy bars, bars that does that is called slides. So the slides select uh, rows based on their number. You can say slide oh. one. It gives, you can select the only the first row. Interesting. Interesting. Slide number two. Yeah. So you can provide it. You look at the slide. Um, yeah. Just look at slides. Slice, slice. I forgot what did I what did I do? Slice, slice. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Slice. Uh, I love it. Slice looks sounds great. One, okay. one, one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, amazing! Yeah. Nice. Thank you for this. Nice. Thank you for this. Actually, it's nice to know because select is always for columns, and what if you need to select rows? Yeah. So. But I guess you would use. Um, filter because you select normally you would select on certain values so I want to select everything that is month of January 
No, no. But, I mean, the slides you can use it maybe to, uh, I mean, select the last maybe 10 values, the last 10 from you yeah, can say yeah. slide head, maybe you yeah, put the top 10. And you have slide head and slide tail. There are variants. If you look at the documentation, you can see that. Mm -hmm. And you can also slice max. So it will select the rows with the maximum value. So slice mean, the row with the minimum. So all stuff that it had a cool functionality there. So I, I was like working uh, today and I want to select the rows. So I was just Googling. So I see uh, one of the options I saw is like, oh, slides in Stack Overflow. I say, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. No, no, no. The slice slash me. Slash, slash, yes. No, 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 no. We go back. Slash. Put, no, no, no. Go back. <laughs> go back. Yeah. So put tab, tab. 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 Yeah. No, I can't do tab. tab. Yeah, you ah. can see. Okay. Well, why did I do this? So what do I want to slice minimum of, like uh, of a certain variable? Let's see. Um. <gasps> oh, fun. Yeah, you can. Oh, cool. I, so yeah, the I minimum think. arrival time. Oh, look at that. Something like that, yeah. Cool. That's really nice. Thanks for sharing. OK. Um, so next week we could do uh, the workflow, say, so then we can do like maybe 30 minutes approximately to review exercises and then the next 30 minutes for the workflow, because there are some exercises and it's, the workflow is very brief, but, uh, oh wait, huh? No, these exercises are very, no. Okay. Um, I, I think... I, I think I think I agree with uh, with, with Harvard also and, and and you Niha that we could just spend uh, more time on exercises. Yep. Because uh, from, from from my experience, if if you are comfortable with the verbs, mm -hmm. the verbs, uh, the other things are going to be much easier and and, and mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that would be nice actually, even for me because I didn't manage to do all of the exercises. So it's nice if we can spend some time, but we do it in our own time and then we review it because doing it all in one hour from scratch will take too much. Yeah, yeah and, and maybe we could just do something interactive. Anyone can share a screen and, um, and that, that, that would be fun, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, so next week, exercises.